Welcome to this accelerated ID series on Canva in instructional design. We hope that you are as excited as we are. My name is Shantae Skildager, and I am so happy that you are here. I am the chief trainologist of the instructional design company, founder of this group, and the creator of the instructional design and tech accelerator program. Before I transitioned into instructional design and e-learning, I was a classroom teacher. I taught fifth and sixth grade science in Greenville, Texas. So my Texas peeps, you might know where that is. Um, it's northeast of Dallas. It's a very small little town, a very small district, but that is where I got my start in teaching. And then my first instructional design job was in a university at Texas A&M University Commerce. If you have been a teacher, you might know that teaching salaries are not always what you would hope for them to be. So I, I ended up in a situation where I was worried that I wasn't going to be able to make ends meet, that I wasn't going to be able to live the lifestyle that I had hoped that I was going to live, or, and I wasn't going to be able to put my son through college in the way that I had hoped to put him through college. So I started applying for jobs and I took a leap of faith and I took an instructional design and e-learning job at Texas A&M University Commerce. And let me tell y'all, I've never looked back. It was one of the best decisions that I've ever made. So if you are looking to make that transition, let me tell you, it's a really great field in the industry to be in. So we're so glad that you are here for our topic today. And with us is Gail Bauer. She is one of our accelerator alumni in our instructional design and tech accelerator program. I met Gail this past August. We were doing a back to school challenge and she was one of the participants in that challenge. And we were doing, as a part of the challenge, people had to submit work and she would submit her work. And I was like, wow, that's really amazing. And I would ask her like, hey, how did you do that? How did you make that graphic? And she would say Canva. And I was like, wow, that's really cool. I didn't know you could do that in Canva. And then whenever she was in the Instructional Design and Tech Accelerator program, she created the most amazing learning persona, the most amazing slide graphics, beautiful facilitator participant workbook guides, even her storyline. At the beginning, there was this video at the beginning of her storyline for her intro slide. I'm like, what did you use to do that? Did you do that in Adobe Premiere Pro? She's like, no, I built that in Canva. So it just, she just opened my eyes to how much there is to learn in Canva. So I'm really excited to bring Gail on now so that she can start sharing some of her expertise with you. All right, Gail, my friend, let me bring you on. I'm so excited that you are here. How are you doing today? How are you feeling? I'm good. Thank you for having me today. It's really Absolutely. exciting. Absolutely. Well, we are just tickled that you are here with us. Yeah. And I can't lie with that back to school challenge. I was trying to win that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, you, you won by putting yourself out there. I did. I did. That's true. <laughs> so tell us, tell us, how did you get started in, with using Canva? So when I started, I probably started my getting interested in instructional design two years ago. And I started realizing that there were a lot of tools outside the Adobe. Mm -hmm. And obviously, Adobe is an expensive subscription. So I'm trying to picture my future and how am I going to manage this. And Canva was suggested. And I, it was the one that I was easily adapted to. And at first, I was just using it to create diagrams, infographics for my projects. And then I really got into using it for social media. And that's kind of where I learned like any skills or tricks and trades. And when I took your class, then I was like, wow, I, you know, I bet I could create customized clips inside Canva, which I hadn't done before. And it really became an all around tool. It's a one stop shop, you know, because normally you I'm used to working in multiple applications for one outcome and one application. Um, but there's things it does that really make the videos engaging for the audiences that are the learners and stuff that you can't get just from Premiere. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, you know this because I, I tagged you in Facebook yesterday about it. But anytime I'm doing something creative in Canva, messing with Canva, I'm like, Gail could just do this so much better than I could. Yeah. It's a study. I mean, it is a study of graphic design. 
but they provide all that in there. It's just knowing how to look and what you're looking for. Which is why I'm so excited for you to be here and share some of these tips with us. Because just like before the show, y'all, I was telling Gail, it's like, there's so much in Canva. I don't even know where to look. Like, I didn't know that you could do a vision board in Canva. Who knew that that kind of stuff was there? There's just so much there. Yeah, and they even increased recently, I just noticed. Like, if you just type in in their search diagrams, like if you're thinking Venn diagrams or any, like, opposing thing, like, they've enhanced that there's so many more templates in there than what there was a year ago. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that everybody here really just wants to start learning from you. So how about I pop out, I give, I'll give right. the space to you and you can lead us through this amazing training. How about that? All right. Sounds good. All right, my friend, I'll see you at the end. Okay, so I am going to show you guys how I approach using Canva, and I'll give you a brief rundown of the tools and the layout. So when you open Canva, the first thing that you're going to see is this board. And on the left is just a quick menu. They store all your designs that you work on are saved under all your designs. Um, you can see the recent designs. You can see what you've shared with other people or maybe people have shared with you. I haven't used that yet, but I can see people have. Um, I have, they have a folder system in here and I'm not endorsing to get the pro version of Canva. You can still do a lot on the free version. I mean, I've just been a pro member for maybe two months. Um, but I do know like with the free version, you get two folders and for the pro, you get as many as you want. Um, what's nice and what I want you to remember is this starred folder because I use this folder constantly and I'll show you how. Um, but from this screen, when I come into Canva, like my first thought for whatever project I'm working on is let's say I'm building a learner persona. I will come up to templates. And as you guys know, a learner persona is sort of just like an infographic. So maybe your first thought is, well, let me go look at the infographics to see like what they have. And infographics are great tools, but they do follow a very common design that might not inspire me because I use the learner persona to start inspiring the look of my course. And so I probably won't come to the infographic section to start my learner persona. Instead, when I go up to templates at the top of the page, I will probably pick flyers or posters because those are eight and a half by 11 size. And I'm just thinking I have a lot of information about those learners that I want to put on that page. So I need the space. So I will scan when I come in here and I just, and sometimes I just do this for fun and I will just come and start just looking at the, at the designs and see things I like. And I will, so, because sometimes these update a lot. So I don't want to lose like something I like. So if I see something particular that I like, and maybe it won't work for what I'm doing now, like I know probably getting stars is maybe a hard thing to find, or I like this shape that it's making like the shut in the corners. So I will star this and it will go to that folder I showed you as a saved um, file for me to reference later. But in this scenario, let's say that we are building a learner persona for a corporation and let's say that it's on customer service so i know so i just start thinking like this is a good design with the shapes and stuff it kind of resembles a learner persona where i can add information and i'm not saying to copy designs from Canva, I certainly like to take their designs and I like to customize them to ways that I like. So I know before I started this, I picked a Pacific, uh, all your folders. I actually picked out a poster to already start this because I can talk about graphic elements on that. So I'm going to, and this is my start folder. And I say videos in here because just these effects, like they are hard to recreate on your own. 
So I save them. Uh, where's that poster? Okay, so this is the poster I picked to do today's example. And I picked this because I kind of thought that it had a layout that I can kind of easily customize. It kind of, I can kind of make this a, cor a corporate looking ad. I mean, learner persona. Sorry, I work in advertising, so I think ad. <laughs> um, and the nice thing about Canva is the effects, even if you're building a one page graphic or if you're doing a video, the effects and the animations work the same regardless of what you want to use. Um, so I, I don't know what the correct terms for these spaces are, but I consider this my workspace. And everything is about what you have clicked and how it's layered. And it's important you start thinking about that when you're using applications um, for anything, even if you're using the Adobe thing, everything's in layers. Um, so I want to point out here on the left, you have your elements, which is where you go get your images. And Canva provides, um, they provide graphics. They, these are called, they call these magic effects, but really they're just animated graphics that you can put in your projects. Um, but I said this was for a corporation. So let's say the, we need some business people. They have a collection of photos, graphics, videos. They really, they, I think they even suggest audio that goes along with, I guess, business. Um, so let's look at photos. Pick a nice group picture. You can just, to drag pictures into your image, you can either just, everything's about clicking. So you can either click on something and it just appears in there or you can take this photo and drag it over this photo box and it just fits in there. Um, one thing about Canva that I don't have an answer for, some of these image boxes, they size differently. I'm not sure yet, but I'll find out later like what defines that because sometimes they don't, they don't slide in like a grouped way like that. I'm not sure why, I mean, this one luckily does but we're building a graphic. So um, when you click on objects, as you can see, like I clicked on this text at the top of the page, you have your normal toolbar. You know, you see this kind of stuff in PowerPoint. Um, you have your fonts, font size. You can change the font color to anything you want. You can bold, italics, you can do alignment. You can even make bullet point list. Um, they even have letter spacing and line spacing, or kerning and letting if you're a graphic designer. Um, I think it gets, let me, let, let's work with some color here. Let's customize this more. Uh, let's say, since this is for a corporation, let's say this is for Visa. Bring Visa's logo in, delete this. Um, so what's interesting here, I want to, that these boxes are connected. Um, that's not always the case. Um, I'm going to leave them connected here, which I guess connected grouped or ungrouped, which the option to undo that is in the top right. So I'm going to, in the title, if it was for a learner persona, just to show you real quick how some of these effects work. Highlight the text. What made that nice about these the box and the text box being grouped is it sizes automatically um, and keeps everything even. I'm so used to doing this stuff manually. That's why I say it's nice it does that kind of stuff. Uh, I see that it has this brown font. What's nice here is I can change the color and just like that I've seen in PowerPoint, it gives you a, a color picker. You just have to add the color and you can come in and say, I want that blue from the Visa font and it will make it blue. Um, 
I think it needs some spacing fixed. I'm going to spread that out a little bit. Since it's a headline, you have more options to do that. And tighten that up. Um, and how, like, I start customizing this, you know, with a learner persona, you need to know about the learners. See their group. So I'm going to ungroup these boxes. I'm going to copy and paste this. I already had bullet points because I'm already thinking in my head, wow, that's a great space to start writing those pain points about the learners. Um, I'll probably delete these because I don't really like fonts with, with wings on them. I call them wings. You know, you can make a whole goal section for the learners. This is just really quick. I would develop this a lot more in general. Uh, oh, here's a graphic design tip. Typically, we are taught in college with graphic design that writing on the side like this is a big no-no. But for a learner persona, you can kind of have fun with it. So I think it should be allowed. Now, I personally think if you're going to try to sell a font going on the side like that, it should probably be a bolder font. And if I wanted something fun that stood out here on the left, I'm not sure this if you want to call this a menu bar because there is another menu toolbar at the top, but they have this text area, which so you can bring in new text um, sizes and which is pretty standard, I think, with most applications. But what they do provide that's unique is they provide these really cool display type fonts. And the reason they do that, not only just to inspire you, but they also, the font is all set up. So even though this says, let me pick one and show you, let's use huge sale. Even though it says huge sale, you can change huge sale to anything you want. So you can and it stays already set with the spacing. I think one of the hardest things when laying stuff out is the spacing between your fonts and your line spacing. Um, it's hard to gauge that on what's readable and not readable, um, especially in here because in, I'm getting off track a little bit, but I'm sorry. Like if you get it off, like in, in InDesign, in which is where I normally do my page layout, you can manually control it by a percentage on here you are kind of eyeing it but that's okay as long as things aren't touching and it's readable you're fine um but if you're going to try to let's say this was for eight employees you're going to try to sell a font going on the side this is too big so i'm going to shrink this If you're going to try to sell a font that go like a design where the design goes up to side, you probably want to pick a font of, that is readable and bold. I'm going to regroup these because I ungrouped them so I could size them. And then I'm going to try to sell this on the side. I'm going to use this edge because I know this picture is at a 90 degree angle. I'm going to use this to kind of line stuff up. Ooh, it's not going to line up that well. But so if you want to sell a font that reads along the side, you want that font to be bold. Now, something I don't use that often, but I did just discover this recently, is Canva. At the very top menu bar, they have a resize option. So you can change the size of your document. They also have, a lot of people like to use rulers. Um, they do have an option that you can put rulers on your page. Um, and they're really simple. You can just drag them in, make sure stuff lines up, which I know this isn't lined up, but well. But, and then when you're done with them, you can just drag them off the screen. Uh, other options they have, Canva does have, and they have a lot, 
I have the pro version, so you're going to see it probably a lot more. But the free version, you can still get the bang for your buck out of here. Like, there's still a lot of options with just the free version. Um, but they have an audio section. They have a really cool chart section, which works sort of just like it does in um, PowerPoint. You can just put in numbers and make whatever you need. Um, maybe you have information about your learners that you can add, um, which is really cool. You can change the colors really simple. Pull up at the top. I mean, there's really a lot of cool options here. Uh, so when it comes to effects, uh, let me briefly go over. So in order to do, a, there's effects and then there's animations. So in order to, to activate them, because see, I have nothing clicked right now. So the only thing where you can add an animation to is the entire page. And so you can click animate at the top and it will activate the entire page or video, depending on what you're doing. And I, I with the free version, you still get really classy animation options. Um, and uh, let's see, sorry, I got a little lost there. So let's say I just want to animate this picture. You can, you click on the picture and then you hit animate and it will just animate that picture. Um, let's say I want to just, I want to do something fun with the font. They call this effects. Um, I, I don't use a lot of effects. What I do is I go find a template that has like a, let's say we're talking about customer service. So we're talking about the headline of this learner persona. So I will go and find a font style that I like on another template and I will copy and paste it into my template. So I don't typically, cause they do give you a lot of options here. Like you can, let's say we, you wanted to add a shadow to that. You can, you can play around with shadows, but you got to be careful with when you do shadows because shadows can be overdone really easily. I mean, you normally like the tightest is the best with just maybe a slight blur, a little transparency. Um, just, to, just to add some effect, but I don't normally do it manually. I really do just go and copy from another template and bring it into my template. Um, what they also do, because even though you're surfing around, you're looking in a template, looking for um, something to add, on this left bar here, they have, I guess they section, they call it templates, and they still give you, even though you've picked a template, they still give you other options. Um, but let's say, you know, you've built this template, you know it's missing something, and, you know, I kind of like these circles on here. So I can't just click it because it will delete my entire page. But I want those circles. So I will do this little trick. I'll add a page and then I will add this design into as a second page. I will copy these circles and I will bring them up to my file. And that way I don't actually lose my design. And then I'll just delete the second page whatever I borrowed from there. The circles are kind of strong, so I will probably put a transparency on that. Um, one thing, if if you're building something, someone brought up to me about, they called them, uh, oh, they use the Photoshop term masking, about masking images. So, let's say I want to do some more effects on this main image. Maybe the color isn't right. I will click on the image and then come up to the top and hit edit image. I don't know how Canva does this, but they have a really unique background remover that truly does work. Um, they also offer options to change just like Instagram, like change different images on here. Um, but the person brought up these smart mock-ups. 
So let's say you're creating a social media post about instructional design and you want to feature your work in, say, a computer because you want people to imagine your work being worked on. Um, I don't know the science behind how they did this, and it's really genius. So now remember, I clicked on this image, then I hit edit image, and then there was a menu called smart mock-ups. All you have to do is find the mock-up that you want your logo or you want your image in, and I'm going to use a laptop, and all you have to do is click on it, and it automatically fills in. I mean, when people joke about graphic design being like magic, I mean, that's a pure example of it. Um, but now you see now when I said, if you remember me talking about layers, now you can see this image is in the front of everything, which is a problem. So you come up to positioning and look, it doesn't give me, and I don't know, I think this is a glitch. They do, it doesn't give me the option to send this to the back, but look, because I moved around now it's in the back. I don't know, but if you have an image that gets caught in the front like that, sometimes you just have to click what's available once and then you can, then the other option will come back to the back. I don't, I don't know what the science behind that is, but, um, so that's kind of how Canva works and how to use something when you're building a learner persona. And like I was talking about when I'm, building these learner personas, I start visually picturing kind of the visual style of what my course will start looking like. And for example, I created this like crazy learner persona for the first project I had in Shantae's program. And I got carried away. And I'm going to tell you how I got carried away and why it's important to separate writing your to stick to the design model structure. When I was building this, I got really excited because I was still exploring how Canva worked. And, you know, I found these my course was targeted to community business owners. So I was like really getting caught up with finding these people walking the street and I was like, oh, wow, I got, let's put a town behind there. And what happened, because when I submitted this, is I concentrated so much on the design that I forgot to gather all the information about my learners, which Shante pointed out. So I went back and adjusted that. But when I was picturing the vision of my course, I really got obsessed with these two bikers. And I was like, even though they're on here and they're pedaling, which again, Canva calls these people the move, they call them, they call them magic effects. And normally when I look them up under elements, I put in like moving objects or moving people or people walking um, or dancing. But I ended up finding these bikers that I really thought was really cool. So when I was picturing how like my course would look, I started picturing these two people riding their bike with a moving background, like I visually pictured a moving movie within my course. And I wasn't sure quite how I could do that because of the effects in Canva. They're almost like a one show deal. There's no like timing them um, when they appear on your screen, like in, like in PowerPoint, you're able to set timing to your animations that's not necessarily possible here. Um, so I realized that, okay, so I'm going to have to, when I was building my PowerPoint of my course, I, um, I ended up going to, it was a ran shutter flat shutter stock and I found a five second clip and this is where it's going to start getting really confusing. So I expect a lot of questions. I went to Shutterstock and got a five second clip, but when I wrote out my course, it was a minute 20. So for that section of my lesson. So I realized I needed to extend the, and it was a watermark, it was a watermarked um, video. It was a watermark video. 
So I, and this is just to show you how you have to use other applications to really build what you want. So I took the five second clip from Shutterstock stock and I put it on my timeline in Premiere and I just copied it until it was like two minutes long. And then I brought that video clip into Canva because you can upload your own files and images and whatever you need into Canva to use. And um, I put the video in a, probably a video template because it's already sized. That's the most convenient thing about Canva is everything, the videos, the, they have choices here. This is your download button here on the right. You get high res pings, JPEGs, PDFs, and video. They format that all for whatever you want. Where if you're a graphic designer, you manually do that. So that's convenient. Um, I'm not, I don't know how they do this. This is just genius. And, um, but anyhow, I extended that video clip. I brought the video clip in Canva and I put my bikers on it because I wanted to create almost like a movie scenario for my learners. And the effects you're seeing here in the clip I'm showing you, this, because I created the clip in Canva, downloaded it, and then I brought it into no PowerPoint. And then I added these effects and graphics to the course. And um, I set up animation timing for all this stuff to go along with my course content. It took, a, it took a while, but it really had a great, cool outcome and really had an engaging experience for the learners. Um, now, in my experience <laughs> with doing e-learning design for people is the first thing they say is to me is don't make it look like a PowerPoint. When you look like, you know, these, this is done in, in PowerPoint. It just has that look of PowerPoint. Um, so eventually, as I was learning more of how to engage this, I ended up, actually, let me go through these time, the time, well, we'll get through to it. Um, I learned, um, I ended up getting a proper background that didn't have the watermark on here. And this was a this was a very long process so that meant even though my powerpoint was done i had then converted it to a video in premiere i was sort of backtracking at this point where i was going to put another video in and like redo this whole thing and i thought naively i could just do the same thing that i could that i could just bring in a video, extend the background to in Premiere Pro to make a long video in Canva to download and just put it back in PowerPoint and all my emanations would be timed perfectly. It didn't work like that. And it wanted me to, I would have to retime the whole emanation. And I, I was like, well, I guess I'm gonna rebuild this whole thing in Canva. So Canva's timeline for, which is what I'm going to call this bottom part. I'm not sure what they call it, but it's sort of like scenes and everything. So you can, and I'm going to go through this quickly. Um, the only, the reason I had to, ex, they, it lets you set up timing, but everything's timed to how long that video is that you bring in. So if this video here in the background, if it is only two seconds, then you're only gonna get two seconds per scene here, which is a problem. And then on top of that, cause remember I said the effects, like, cause you can set up timing in PowerPoint when things come in, you can't really do that in Canva. So here's my new scene. And I extended that background in Premiere Pro and I brought it into Canva. And then I started setting up these animations. The animations only they only come in per scene and then they disappear per scene. You can't, the only reason that you're like, but this video is long, but that's only because this is my, this is my video, this is my entire PowerPoint 
video that I downloaded and brought in here just to show you guys. But back to the timing. So I wasn't able to do the same effect where in here I could bring in, in PowerPoint, I was able to bring in every point. I had to then change up the timing here. So the timing that had to come in at certain points and then like another one would come in, it wouldn't allow me to bring it in in a row at different points to go along with my voice content. And then I thought, and this is, these are just challenges I faced with this because this was really, it took me probably three or four hours just to figure this out. But then I was struggling with getting that timing right. And the timing that went along with my voice server. So again, I went back to Premiere and I sliced out the voice server for this particular section of my, of my video. And I brought the voice server in here and I line, there's another line when you have voices in here, which we're not really getting into music today and voices in here. But when you bring in an audio clip, it comes below your timeline here. And so I had the it the voice over below this timeline and I just engaged all this activity above it to go along with my content. Um, so that because I did sit there and try to figure out mathematically how to do that with what my voice over was doing. And it it was like 40 minutes of that. And I'm like, what am I doing? There has to be an easier way of doing this. And I just found bringing that section of my voice over in here to line it up. And then I deleted the voice server before I downloaded the final file. And that's because Canva doesn't have the audio editing abilities that Premiere Pro has. See, so every program is supposed to work together. Canva just gives you like an extra pop because I want, you can't create, you can't create this, this kind of stuff in Premiere Pro. You're still going to do a lot of layering. It's not, you're not gonna, it's still gonna be a lot of layering, a lot of effects, a lot of things happening on your timeline. And here it's really broken down simple and you can add really quick engagements and build. I think it's really engaging anyways. Um, but let me see if there's anything else. So obviously like, I think a lot I noticed in a lot of like, our discussions in our office hours and in our class, a lot of people ask about the graphic design, like finding the thing that works, like how, how do you come up with it? There's a lot of stuff about layout, you know. I would recommend that going to the templates on the top menu bar on the main screen and just going through, especially the social media posts, the social media posts have a lot of examples and a lot of effects on there. And you want to study it and you want to dissect it to see how it's done. Um, but social media has the most engaging, like cool graphics that can really like change the style of your course that you can copy into your project. Um, they have great videos on here. I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff. I mean, once I even used a PowerPoint example they had, and I made it a video for one of my courses. And so I'm creating, what I'm saying is I'm creating particular scripts, like clips, like parts of my courses that I'm creating here. I'm downloading it and I'm bringing it into Premiere and I'm adding it to maybe something I created in PowerPoint. I'm just enhancing my project with more engagement. Um, but just to show you how I dissect a project. So I picked this really cool video that I found that I thought was really nice. Um, and here are things I like about it that you're probably not seeing. So this, this is grouped together. And what I like about this is there's a transparency on here, but there's also like this font they're using. They have put an effect on here that has a shadowing effect that helps it pop with that back with that black background on top of an image. Like there's a lot of layering going on in there and maybe to your eye, you're not going to see it, but I can, I know there's a slight shadow on there to make that pop. Another reason this stood out to me was they have a gradient transparency box. 
I don't even know how that gets created in Canva. So this is definitely one of my starred videos that I saved because gradients are some of my favorite things. I think they have. And just to play this video that makes it interesting. So they have the effects on here. Um, I just think it's very classy type of video. When I see something like this, I'm think I do think, how will this make a really course a great course video? And um, so when I take something and just really quickly, I just took this video that you just watched and I kind of converted it to a customer service video for Visa. Um, and it was just a matter of copying and pasting it and highlighting those boxes and bringing other elements in, like here's the circles and, um, you know, changing that gradient to like a blue there's more of the circles. And I threw this next one in because I know you guys learn in the program how to do split screens in, you learn how to do split screens in Premiere. I would say Premiere is still the best place to learn something like that. I mean, this split screen is okay. I mean, the effects are great, but they're still limited to what they do. It's still not like an official Premiere Pro split screen. Um, Another thing someone asked me about, oh, before I go on, I want to talk about the transitions. Right between, you'll see on your timeline, there's little dots here. The transitions are basically the same transitions you get in Premiere Pro. So, and all you do is have to click on them and they will add to that. You can change, control the seconds of it here. Um, but the last thing I want to show you is someone asked me, about creating your own video. So let's say I want to add a page to here. You, it, all I, you have to do is grab it and I want to bring it to the front. I don't normally work on a black background. Um, but the other day I shot a video with my iPhone with 4K. So my cute cat Betty. So I imported that or uploaded it into here. So it was a video I did myself. And let's go use this gradient. So I'm gonna highlight this gradient. I'm gonna bring it back. Bring it back to the beginning. I can see, you can see my desk. I'm gonna cover that there. Um, then I'm gonna add some of the display text they have. And you can see like their display text, it's grouped. I guess that's a sign, like if it's dotted like this with another box, that means things are grouped together. So I'm gonna ungroup that. I'm gonna put, ready. Cat, um, let's say we wanna put, just another little element. Let's see. Uh, that's weird. Uh, I don't want anything depressing or weird. Let's put moving animals. Well, let's say we just use this. You can, put a, you can put any moving on here, just to add some cool effect. Of course, it goes in the middle of the screen. You can add a, animations on here. We can pan that in. Let's say we want to put a text effect because they do have, and where is it? Hmm. Typewriter, you can do typewriter, you can do cool, other cool things on here. Then you just hit play. You can kind of create a layered, really cool animation and you really can't create these type of effects all in Premiere, so Premiere Pro. But I hope you guys enjoyed that.
Well, I know that I did for sure. <laughs> What's it's funny, a lot. <laughs> what's funny, y'all, is I didn't know that she was going to be talking about Betty the cat today, and I feel like I dressed for for the event. Live yeah. like Betty. Yep. <laughs> I mean, Betty lives good. This Betty lives just as good as that Betty. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah. this has been really, really great, Gail. I, I have a question for you though, just for for clarity for me. Cause it's been a while since I've seen your, your, like your PowerPoint and your asynchronous video that you created. So when you were on the video where you have the bicycle, the bicyclist and they're moving, correct me or remind me, you originally built that for just the PowerPoint, right? And embedded it in. So that was like for a live instructor led session. You, you created movement. I, and I know that wasn't really the assignment, but what happened was I got so inspired by those bikers. I didn't want to lose my, what where I was going with those lessons. Cause I don't know if I would in scenario do that much engagement in that type of lesson, but I was so determined to make the bikers work. And I knew they, I just felt they had a purpose. I, I was going somewhere. But yes, that's where I created it was in that set, in that project. Well, I'm glad that you did that. And I'm glad that you brought it up because what I want to emphasize here to like our instructional designers, our aspiring instructional designers, is that you can create engagement and curiosity and movement on a static slide by bringing in video clips like this, right? Mm -hmm. There's not any words or anything that's on it, but it does, like you could just still have it on the screen and somebody live could be talking about something that's related to that. So this is just a really good use okay. case for how you could bring video and movement using Canva into a PowerPoint. So that's really cool. And huh. then and then she took this, by the way, she took her PowerPoint, the whole PowerPoint, and then she converted that live instructor led PowerPoint slide deck into an instructional video, right? By putting some audio behind it. So it and in that video, it seemed like animation had been built for that video because she built this in Canva, which if you were to use something like After Effects, you know, for like every one minute, it's four to six hours of development or something crazy like that. So, and that's a good point because that's the thing about Canva. Because when I was, when you use Premiere Pro, I mean, you can really warm up your computer. That fan yeah. starts running, yeah. you're really yeah. using the system. Because Canva is web-based, you don't run into that. Absolutely. So, you know, it's a time saver in that it provides a lot. It's a time Absolutely. saver in that. Absolutely. I was chatting with Darlene, another accelerator on Monday, and I was loading up Adobe Premiere Pro because we were going to look at something in the timeline. Mm -hmm. And I was like, there goes my computer. You can hear it. You can hear it kicking up because my fan and my computer, like it starts working really hard. And I have a ton of memory and storage. I've got it all. So yeah, but it's crazy. Like, and I love Canva too. And you can export this just like so right. fast. So easy up at the top. I mean, that's the thing. As a graphic designer, I've had to do everything manually. I've had to figure mm -hmm. out pixels. I've had to figure out sizes and all this. It is all done for you in here. And I don't know the magic behind of it, but it formats everything digitally for you. And that is such a huge convenience. The even video, um, they do gifts. Um, you can add. I mean, you can, even though I didn't get into sound, you can do really. You can add your own voiceover that you record in Premiere and bring it in here and really customize it. I mean, yeah. JPEGs, pings. I mean, it's great. And you can even do the opposite, right? If you bring video in that has sound, whenever you download it, you can download it without the audio. So you could just strip right. it out real easy if you just want the graphic. So there's right. so many really cool things that you could do. Yes, yeah, study it, <laughs> study those templates. Because even though you're seeing me use a template, the goal is eventually when you come and you need to do something to go and start bl on a blank page and you will get to that, that will happen. And you just get, once you practice enough, you will start, nope, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it on my own. I have whole ideas and I can do this. Like you, that will happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I also love like in, in Canva and I do this all the time. Like I use that resize feature all the time for different things. Like, Oh, I want it for Instagram. Oh, I want it for Twitter. Oh, I want it as an email header. 
So you mm-hmm. can just resize it and it, it will do some of the work for you. Right. And then you I, just have to stretch some things. So I like, didn't even, I didn't even know it did resizing. Like that's where I'm still a learner of this stuff. Like I didn't even know it did, it did that until in one of my, in my cohort group, Elizabeth pointed, Oh, you can resize this here. And I'm like, what? Yes. No, I had that control. Absolutely. I mean, I didn't even know about rulers. I was like, Oh, they have all these little, little rulers, they have margins. Like that's mm-hmm. very interesting to me. Yeah. It's really, I wish I invented this. <laughs> Don't <laughs> <laughs> we would all be mega rich had we invented this. <laughs> uh, another, just another tip for you all as instructional designers, a lot of times you have to share files and, and get your, um, your business owner to review the work that you've done, or, you know, like maybe you just want a colleague to look, to review it. Every one of these graphics that she has here on the screen, you can grab a URL for that. And you can send that URL to someone to look at that at that graphic. So that's another really cool tip. I did so not like, know that. Yes, yes. So we share them all the time, like in our ClickUp boards and our Trello boards. We'll have links to mm-hmm. files for people to look at, open up, evaluate. So that's just another really cool tool. Yeah. I've learned some really cool stuff. I really want to go through a training just on video, like really <laughs> learning how to do that because that is just so cool. Mm-hmm. It would just take so much time if I didn't have to do that kind of stuff and it like little stuff in Adobe Premiere Pro all the time, like right. doing an intro or something. So Gail, thank you so much for putting in all the time and the effort to just even prepare this, come and lead it. I really appreciate you. And of course, you know, I think you're the Canva queen, so there's nobody better to lead. Thank this. you. Thank you. <laughs>